Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be covering my physical materials. So this is a custom class with the plugin and I'm going to kind of walk you through, you know, some of the base settings and kind of how you can use them. So if you click on really anything, you know, inside of here, such as this uh, cardboard target or the steel one, the concrete, the walls, whatever. If you look at the material, you will see that it has the physical material assigned to it. So let's head over to that and you can see when we open it up, the actual asset is not the normal physical material. It is instead the FPS template physical material, and it's loaded with a lot more options. Now, there's a couple sections in here, and basically they're kind of meant to be used in a different way than you would normally use them for handling things like, you know, effects, where normally you would do a switch on surface type. So, for example, you would give this like a surface type of whatever you define in the editor, this is meant to completely discard that. So it's meant to be a little bit faster as well as give you more flexibility and options with it. So here I have my projectile. So let's go ahead and look at that. We have our projectile impact effects. As you can assume, these are all gonna be related to impact effects. So we have sound settings and effect. So the impact effect is gonna obviously be the actual particle system. So this is meant for Cascade or Niagara. It will play both and a decal that you would want to be applied to it. So you can have it set to, a, you know, basically whatever material you want, it'll apply it. Then we have the depooling method, which would be for the Niagara system, whether or not to use the particles rotation for the impact, the actual decal size of when you apply it, the lifetime of the decal, the screen fade size, so like how close or how far you have to be for it to kind of fade away and not be visible, and the sound. So the sound is the impact, well, sound obviously. So if I shoot the still target, you heard, you can both see and hear the impact effect. So I shoot, you can see some sparks and stuff like that, and the audio. And that's all being played directly from here. And the way this gets played is through a couple static functions. So if I head over to the projectile, you can see an example of that. So here's where I basically just call the on hit. You can ignore that. But what we do is we get the physical material from the hit. We cast it to my class type here. And I have a static function called spawn impact effect. And in this case, this one is sound delay. There's also just a normal spawn impact effect, which is the exact same thing. And I'll explain the differences between the two here in a bit. But the only thing you have to do is just get the physical material. So you just cast it to that type. And from here, you can get, if you search for impact, you can see the different effects. So here we have one for footsteps, here we have one for grenades, and here we have one for projectiles, and here's our other. So this other one is meant to be kind of, you know, whatever you really want. Now this is kind of like a, uh, let's say you had, I don't know, a knife. Well, I don't have a knife one here. Well, you could use that for that if you don't want to create your own custom one. So that's really kind of their general use. So that's really all there is to it. So you get the physical material from whatever it is, you cast it to my class type, and you get whatever impact effects you want that you've already applied on it, such as the projectile impact effects here, and you can call spawn impact effect. And that's it. The system will take care of the rest for you. It'll play the sound, whatever decal you want spawned. So that's good for things like footsteps and little particles and stuff like dust getting kicked up and all that. And that's, yeah, it. Now, as I mentioned, there's two functions. So there's spawn impact effect, which I'll just plug it into there for now. It's the exact same thing. Gets played the exact same way. As you can see, it's hooked up in the same manner. But the difference is one takes in the speed of sound, while the other one just plays the raw impact effect. So what I mean by the speed of sound, if you are not familiar, let me go ahead and I'll shoot a faraway target. Let me switch to this guy. And let me rest up. Alright, so let's see. I think it's about six mils high. A little higher. Okay, so you can see how long it took to actually hear the impact. So I'll shoot another one. So one, two, three. It took about three seconds for us to hear the actual impact of the sound. And that's all being treated through this. So 
It also has some optimizations in there. So if, let's say, you shoot something really, really close, like within 80 meters or something like that, I can't remember what, exactly what I set it to, uh, it will play it instantly. It's not going to actually take into effect the speed of sound. It's just going to you know, play it instantly. But anything beyond that, it'll act with the speed of sound. So you can get that kind of simulated effect going. But yeah, that's really kind of the basics of it. Uh, the character sections, the exact same. You have all your impact effects. And again, the grenade, same thing. Other is the same thing. Uh, this one, in this case, has the empty case impact sound. It's kind of up to you to implement in your own manner. In my case, I have mine set up differently, so... Mine's just through the Niagara particle system. But in your case, you would maybe want to spawn like an actual actor or something along those lines and handle kind of like your own trace system. Or I'm trying to figure out how to do it through the Niagara system, but I'm pretty new to Niagara. So that goes for really everything here. So the steel had its own steel impact. This cardboard or this wall, for example, has its own, which would be the wood, which is the same thing. Just, you know, I have a different Niagara system. In this case, I have an impact decal that I want to play or spawn and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You just kind of set it up how you want. And I have functions that are there and meant to be kind of played to take care of it for you. So instead of doing like a, having several different things for like spawning a particle effect, spawning a sound, spawning a decal, you can just move that all directly into one place and keep it nice and clean. So that kind of sums up how you do everything. Uh, it's very easy to create one of these. So for example, if you want to create a new one, you can just right click, go to physics, go to physical material, and you would select my physical material here. And then you can open it up and you have all the settings that you would need to, you know, apply to whatever you might want to. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you're interested in this plugin, the link is down in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find the Discord down below as well. And I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.